Let's start this off with Michael Conforto. Now, I find Michael Conforto to be very interesting in this year's market. Now, go back a couple of years ago, he missed all of 2022 because he needed to get shoulder surgery. He came back last year in 23 with the Giants on a two-year deal. Didn't put up amazing numbers by any means, a 99 WRC+. Plus. But this year, the numbers went up a notch. As you can see here, the batting average on base, still a little on the lower side, but the slugging at a 450, the WRC+, plus at a 112, 20 home runs, those are pretty solid numbers overall but what I find intriguing about that is that his advanced metrics were pretty solid this year but remember he was in a picture friendly park at Oracle in San Francisco for half the year the Giants this year ranked 27th in park factor when it came to left-handed hitters so I think if you put Conforto in a better environment a little more friendly to hitters out there I think you could end up seeing him being a pretty solid pickup next year now taking a look at maybe some teams that he could go to maybe the Toronto Blue Jays they got an opening in the outfield they're looking to retool this coming offseason I think that could be a pretty good fit maybe the Atlanta Braves they only got two lefty bats at the moment with Matt Olson and Michael Harris the second and with Ronald Acuna Jr. having to get knee surgery this past year maybe they feel like they could use a little bit more depth in the outfield and also it's going to depend on what's going on with Ramon Laureano he's a free agent as well so I could see this potentially being a fit maybe the Kansas City Royals they do have a lot of lefty bats so not sure if they want to add another lefty bat but they they could use a bit more offense. Their offense uh, staggered at times this year. But Michael Conforto, I definitely think he could be an interesting one this offseason. Up next, I got Glaber Torres. I'm very intrigued with Glaber Torres this offseason for a couple of reasons. One being, there's not a lot of obvious landing spots for him, at least as of right now. And two, his numbers took a dip this year after a very good season in 2023. He had 25 home runs, a 120 WRC+, a 453 on the slugging. But this year, all of his numbers went down however there is a bit of a caveat to that now the Yankees in the second half eventually moved Glaber Torres to the leadoff spot and as you can see here in the final month of the season he hit 333 so he definitely looked a lot more comfortable there now when it comes to Glaber you know like I said there's not a lot of landing spots for him could you see him maybe just stay with the Yankees that's going to come down to what the Yankees want to do moving forward right they got a couple of young guys that are looking for some playing time maybe someone like his Waldo could Cabrera can get the job at second base or maybe Oswald Peraza it seems like he's been trying to get some playing time now for about 48 years and uh, he's you know still just kind of hanging around in the minor leagues only 24 years old so I could see a situation where maybe the Yankees give him a chance so we'll see but there's a couple other teams if he ends up going elsewhere I already mentioned the Blue Jays here what you could do here you know move Will Wagner over to third base that could open up second base or maybe you could do something like the Seattle Mariners right at second base as of right now you got Dylan Moore projected to be there so and with the Mariners hey we saw what happened with that offense this year it got better down the stretch but you know maybe Glaber could give them a bit more of a punch at second base either way I think with Glaber Torres uh it's going to be interesting to see what ends up happening with him and again he had the down year but he was a lot better in the leadoff spot could that end up salvaging his offseason we'll have to wait and see but Glaber Torres I'm definitely interested. Let's talk about Kirby Yates. And it's very unfortunate that the Rangers had to go through a World Series hangover this year because they wasted a very good year from Kirby Yates. Now, it's been a bit of a wild ride for Yates over the last few years. Go back to 2019. He was absolutely dominant that year for the Padres. 41 saves, ERA at a 1.19, FIP at a 1.30, 15 strikeouts per nine, just under two walks per nine, a sensational year. But after that, the wheels started to come off. 2020 in that shortened season he was having some arm issues and then he went to the Blue Jays remember that I don't know if people remember that he was a Toronto Blue Jay at one point but he missed that entire season had to get Tommy John made his comeback with the Braves in 2022 and then in 23 he was pretty decent for the most part and then with the Rangers this past year looking like his old self 61 games ERA at a 1.17 FIP at a 2.50 33 saves a great year from Kirby Yates and like I said the Rangers going through a World Series hangover I don't think a lot of people realize how good Kirby Yates was so it'll be interesting to see where he lands this offseason you know you got a few spots here I could easily just see him staying with the Rangers why fix what's not broke they're going to be looking to get back into contention in 2025 I could 
see him just going back there. Or maybe the Red Sox give them a call, right? Kenley Jansen, he's definitely not coming back. He's probably going to be a Dodger for all we know. But you do have Liam Hendricks here. He is projected to be the closer at this point. But Liam Hendricks, he's missed a lot of time over the last couple of years. So maybe the Red Sox feel like, hey, let's get some insurance in this bullpen. I think that could be a pretty solid signing. Or maybe the Milwaukee Brewers. Now, you got Devin Williams here, but... He's been in the rumor mill as of late. A lot of people are speculating whether or not he could end up getting traded. So if they trade Devin Williams, maybe you could bring in a veteran guy like Kirby Yates. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, but hey, after this great year he had, I definitely want to see where he goes. Up next, I got Yohan Mankata. It doesn't seem like long ago when Yohan Mankata was one of the top prospects in Major League Baseball, and a lot of people thought he was going to be one of the next best stars in the game. Go back to that 2019 season. He was great that year. Hit 315 with a 367 on base, a 548 on the slugging, 25 home runs, a 139 WRC plus, a 5.2 fan graph wins above replacement at only 24 years old so yeah it was easy to think this guy was a star in the making uh, 2021 had a decent year that year had a 375 on base a 120 wrc plus the power went down a little bit but still a solid year but since then he just hasn't been able to do much of anything he hasn't been able to stay on the field he's had a lot of injuries so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with him this coming year now he is uh looking to play winter ball so to make up for the lost playing time this year he only played 12 games this year did hit okay over those 12 games, but you got to remember with Mankata, man, there's a lot of talent here, 29 years old. If this guy stays on the field, stays healthy, he could be a very productive player for a team out there. And now for the White Sox, he is still under control. Uh, he has the club option. I don't see the White Sox exercising that though. They're looking to cut payroll. They're looking to move forward here. $25 million for the club option. I just don't see them exercising that, especially considering the fact he hasn't been able to stay on the field. So I expect him to take a one-year deal this offseason, a prove-it kind of a deal. You know, kind of, you know, makes me think of Marcus Semien a few years ago. He took that one-year deal after the bad year, and we all saw what happened with Marcus Semien that year. Ended up getting a massive contract. Now let's go back to the Toronto Blue Jays. Maybe they could do the same thing here. They could have an opening at third base here. You got Ernie Clement projected to be at third, but maybe they could take a chance on Yoan Mankata. We'll see. Uh, maybe the Houston Astros, right? Alex Bregman is a free agent. I mean, I'm not sure if he's going to be going back to the Astros at this point, but that could be a fit on a cheaper one-year deal. I think that could make some sense. I'll get back to the Brewers. I mentioned them a little bit earlier, uh, but right now, third base, you definitely have an opening here, right? Willie Adamas is a free agent, so Joey Ortiz is probably going to be sliding into that shortstop spot, so maybe the Brewers can take a chance here. Yoan Mankata, again, if he stays healthy, he could be a very productive player and he could end up being a steal this offseason let's talk about tyler o'neill and it's been a rather interesting few years for tyler o'neill go back to that 2021 season with the cardinals he was great that year hit 286 a 352 on base the 560 slugging a 143 wrc plus 34 home runs one of the best bats in the game at that time but after that he couldn't really stay on the field he was having a bunch of injuries along with the fact that him and cardinals manager oliver marmel weren't really seeing eye to eye marmel was thinking he wasn't hustling on the base paths tyler o'neill was like what are you talking about my friend i'm always hustling out there so last offseason he ended up getting a fresh start with the red sox got traded there and he proceeded to have a very solid year now he did miss some time this year 113 games he had a couple of different injuries going on but very good production during that time he slugged 511 a 131 wrc plus 31 home runs so yeah i'm looking to see where tyler o'neill ends up landing this offseason because hey it's not very often you get a good power hitter on the market like this so if he can stay healthy he could be a very productive player for a team out there now with the Red Sox you know could he end up just staying there I could see the possibility I personally think the Red Sox are going to look at other options because he did miss some time this year so I think the Red Sox they would like to look towards some options that are a bit more dependable with staying on the field we'll see I, I could see them bringing him back I, I could see them thinking he's a, a bit of a fallback option I think they'll look at other options first but he definitely 
still fits in this lineup as a right-handed hitter. Now, you got the Detroit Tigers. They're going to be looking for a right-handed hitter this offseason. I feel like they could use a bit of power in this lineup, right? He could play in the outfield. He can DH as well. So I could definitely see him fitting with the Detroit Tigers. I think that would be a pretty fun fit. I'll mention the Blue Jays once again. I've mentioned them a couple of times already. But hey, the Blue Jays, they're looking to retool this coming offseason. Tyler O'Neill is originally from Canada, so I could see that being a fun fit. But as of right now, left field, you got Nathan Lukes projected out there. You got Joey Loperfito in there as well. But O'Neill would definitely give them a boost from the right side. So again, with O'Neill, yeah, I'm interested to see where he lands. When healthy, he's a very productive hitter. Up next, I got Jerickson Profar, and I find Profar not to be just one of the most interesting free agents this offseason, but one of the most interesting free agents over the last few years. Now, with Profar, hadn't really done too much in his career, had a couple of solid seasons, 20 home runs in 2018 and 2019, but then he went to the Rockies in 23, and he did absolutely terrible. He did next to nothing, hit 236, a 316 on base, a 364 on the slugging, a 74 WRC plus, ended up getting released. He went back to the Padres, a very small sample size at the end of the year, put up some pretty decent numbers, but no one saw coming what he did this year. A great year, a career year for Jerickson Profar. Hit 280, a 380 on base, a 459 on the slugging, a 139 WRC plus, 24 home runs. Absolutely fantastic. So it's not very often you see a guy who hasn't done too much in his career, you know, a couple of good seasons, and, you know, he was so bad recently, and to have the year that he had this year, you know, kind of came out of nowhere. So with Profar, I'm interested to see what kind of a contract he ends up getting and where he ends up going. So I think the Padres... Stay, I think staying with the Padres makes the most sense, right? Why fix what's not broke? And uh, yeah, they don't really have any other guys at this point that can just step right in. So I think Profar could just stay with the Padres. But, you know, with the Padres, money has been a thing over the last couple of years here. So will they want to give a contract to Profar? We'll just have to wait and see. But if he ends up going elsewhere, I'll mention the Blue Jays again. I know I'm mentioning the Blue Jays a lot here, but they definitely need to be retooling. They need to be adding some pieces here. Maybe Profar could be a fit there. You know, I'll mention the Angels again, possibly. Uh, they're looking to add some pieces this offseason, and they're looking to compete. I'll mention the Braves again. Like I said earlier, Earlier, they only got a couple of lefty bats in this lineup. Ronald Acuna Jr. Had, uh, had the knee surgery, so maybe they could get some insurance there. Again, depending on what happens with Ramon Laureano. So Profar, I definitely think, is very intriguing this offseason. Let's talk about one of the other top right-handed hitters on the market, Teoscar Hernandez. Now, I'm intrigued with Teoscar because of what happened last offseason. Remember, he was a free agent then too. It looked like there was some momentum building for a deal with the Red Sox. Ended up not working out. So he ended up taking a one-year deal with the Dodgers, and he definitely capitalized. I mean, take a look at these numbers here. Hit 272, a 339 on base, a 501 slugging, a 134 WRC plus, 33 home runs. He was the home run derby champion. What a great year for Teoscar Hernandez and a couple of big moments in the postseason so far. So yeah, he's definitely going to cash in here. He's definitely not going to be getting a one-year deal this offseason. So there are some possibilities out there. Why not just stay with the Dodgers, right? He's been so good there why not just hang on to him but you do got some younger outfielders there that are looking for some playing time so I could see a situation where the Dodgers just you know move on they take the one good year from Teoscar if he ends up going elsewhere hey maybe they could revisit talks here with the Red Sox they're going to be looking for a right-handed hitter here especially if Tyler O'Neill doesn't come back right there was interest on both sides last year it just came down to the dollars and uh, it just didn't work out maybe that could work out this offseason I mentioned the Tigers earlier they're gonna be looking for a right-handed hitter that could definitely be a good fit here and you got a team like the Angels once again who I mentioned earlier again with the Braves so Teoscar he is definitely gonna have a market and after the one-year deal that he took this year I really want to see what kind of a deal he gets this offseason let's get back to the pitching side of things and talk about Blake Snell and what a wild year it's been for Blake Snell remember he was also a free agent last offseason it looked like he was gonna be going to the Yankees at one point that never materialized and then then all of a sudden it's spring training he still doesn't have a team the Astros popped up at one point that never happened so people are thinking where the heck is this guy gonna go ended up going to the San Francisco Giants late in spring training and boy oh boy it was very evident 
that he needed to have a spring training. As you can see here, in the first half this year with the Giants, 35 and two-thirds innings, a 6.31 on the ERA. That is absolutely terrible. He had a couple of injuries, but after those couple of injuries, he came back and he was absolutely phenomenal take a look at the second half numbers 68 and a third innings pitched a 1.45 ERA overall in the year ERA at a 3.12 FIP at a 2.43 12 and a half strikeouts per nine under four walks per nine so he actually got the walks down from last year remember that was a big thing with the Pogs Rays uh in 2023 he had about five walks per nine but he got those down in a big way this year and don't forget through the no-hitter. So now the question is, what kind of a deal is he going to get this offseason? I would imagine, first off, he's not going to wait until spring training this time around. I think he's going to get signed a bit earlier. And uh, let's see what kind of a contract he ends up getting. I think he'll end up getting, you know, a five, six-year deal this offseason. Now, with Blake Snell, there's going to be a lot of teams out there looking for his services. Now, I think staying with the Giants makes a lot of sense. Again, had a great second half, but you just had a lot of turnover in the front office. Office. Varn Zadie got fired. Buster Posey's running things now. So maybe a different regime might think a bit differently. But again, I think staying with the Giants makes a lot of sense. Maybe the Baltimore Orioles, right? Corbin Burns, he's going to be a free agent. If he ends up going elsewhere, maybe they could turn to Blake Snell. The Red Sox, they're going to be looking to improve the top of the rotation. Maybe they could turn to someone like Snell. Uh, you got the Mets. I think the Mets can make a lot of sense. You got three guys currently in the rotation that are going to be free agents here. Sean Mania, Luis Severino reno and jose quintana so snell could make a lot of sense for the mets uh maybe the detroit tigers right Tarek scuba was absolutely amazing this year they got a bit funky with the pitching staff this year maybe they feel like hey let's add another ace caliber guy to go along with scuba and don't forget scuba is coming up on free agency here uh rather soon so maybe signing a guy like snell uh, on a long-term deal could be a good insurance policy either way you know because of the second half that's Snell had, you know, along with the offseason uh, that unfolded last year. I'm definitely interested to see where he goes this year. And last but not least, I got a two for one. I got Shane Bieber and Walker Bueller. Now I'm putting these guys in the same category because I think both of them are going to get one year deals, maybe one year deals with an option because both of them got Tommy John in the last couple of years. Shane Bieber missing all of this year. Walker Bueller coming back this year, but very up and down with his numbers. Now, Shane Bieber, we all know what this guy can do when he's healthy. He could easily be the ace of the staff. Go back to 2022, his last full season, 31 star. 200 innings on the dot ERA at a 2.88 FIP at a 2.87 just under nine strikeouts per nine under two walks per nine under a home run per nine very good numbers we all know what he can do he could definitely be a top of the rotation guy for any team out there very interested to see what kind of a contract he ends up getting remember he got Tommy John in April so he should be back in the second half next year so that'd be interesting I would imagine you know probably yes a one-year deal but probably an option on top of that we'll just have to wait and see with Bieber very intrigued about that now Walker Bueller on the other hand a bit of a different case like I said he came back this year very up and down with the numbers right he missed all of 2023 now I think this year in 24 right I think the fact that he you know he was coming back this year you know he's getting some innings under his belt after the Tommy John I still think he's working his way back I think with a normal offseason a normal spring training I think you're going to see a good year out of Walker Bueller go back to 2021 he was great that year 33 starts ERA at a 2.47 FIP at a 3.16 nine strikeouts per nine two walks per nine under home run per nine we know Walker Bueller can be one of the best pitchers in the game when he's healthy definitely interested to see where both these guys end up going this offseason but everyone that's all I got for this video. Tell me some other players that you're interested in this offseason. Tell me some other under-the-radar kind of guys. Are you interested in the top guys on the market this year? Under-the-radar guys, a bit of both. Let me know down below in the comments. But everyone, that's all I got for right now. If you can on the way out, hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll talk to you next time.